As you may already know, neurology is my favorite medical specialty, but it's not what I intend to specialize in. In 2013, in my first year of medical school, I developed symptoms identical to those of lymphoma. I got an unexplained nocturnal fever for two weeks with enlarged cervical lymph nodes. The fatigue and the body aches were so severe, I couldn't even climb two steps of a stair without resting. The severe loss of appetite caused a significant weight loss during this period. But even if I had had a good appetite, I'm not sure I could have eaten more with my severe sore throat. Before I consulted a doctor, I went online, entered my symptoms, and got the diagnosis as lymphoma, a malignancy of the lymphatic system. But I was wrong. I had developed a severe case of infectious mononucleosis, or kissing disease, which can mimic lymphoma. Mononucleosis, or glandular fever, is commonly caused by a DNA virus called EBV, or Epstein-Barr virus. It belongs to the herpes virus family. So, how could I have caught the virus? EBV spreads mainly through saliva. One can get it by kissing, hence the name, the kissing disease. Oh no. But in my defense, there are other ways it can spread through saliva, like when people share food, drinks, or cups and utensils. Some other rare modes of transmission are through blood, during transfusions or organ transplants, and through semen in unprotected sexual contacts. It is fascinating to learn how this microscopic virus can weaken a grown man. The virus first replicates in the epithelium of the nasopharynx, and then invades B lymphocytes. The infected B lymphocytes carry the virus throughout the body across the reticular endothelial system. Since the liver and the spleen are parts of the reticular endothelial system, a notable enlargement of these organs can be seen with mononucleosis. After a few days, the body trains and sends cytotoxic T cells to kill the virus. <clears throat> then I met a senior physician at my university hospital. He examined my throat and suspected mononucleosis straight away. I was relieved to learn that lymphoma was not the first differential diagnosis anymore. He ordered a complete blood count, or CBC, which showed an increased level of lymphocytes. These lymphocytes are the activated white blood cells that fight against the virus. They can be seen in a blood picture as atypical lymphocytes. Another key test is the rapid monospot test. The infected B lymphocytes produce heterophile antibodies. They are called heterophile because they bind with red blood cells of sheep, horses, or cows. In the monospot test, we take the blood of the infected person and put it on a commercial kit with bovine red blood cell extracts. A band of clumped red cells indicates a positive test, but this test is not very sensitive and can produce both false positive and false negative results. There are some highly sensitive but expensive tests, like viral capsid antigen or VCA antibody tests, and Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen or EBNA tests. They are used when the monospot test is negative and the diagnosis is doubtful. <laughs> Patients usually recover in two to four weeks. In rare cases, individuals can develop dangerous complications, such as encephalitis, meningitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myocarditis, hepatitis, and anemias. Chronic fatigue syndrome is another recognized complication. Glandular fever is known to cause a rash in some individuals. If the doctor misdiagnoses glandular fever for a strep throat and prescribes the antibiotic ampicillin, 90% of the people develop a maculopapular rash. Contact sports are discouraged if the spleen is enlarged as it can rupture and result in internal bleeding. The EBV virus increases the risk of several cancers like Burkitt and Hodgkin lymphomas, nasopharyngeal and gastric carcinomas. There are no effective antivirals. Antibiotics are not recommended since EBV is a virus. Steroids are administered in severe and complicated cases. Most of the population is exposed to EBV as kids. By the age of 40, about 90% of the population is exposed to the virus but only a few people go on to develop the disease mononucleosis. The disease severity increases with age. EBV is not the only virus capable of causing mononucleosis. 
Rarely, other viruses like cytomegalovirus can also cause it. The hematologist who observed my blood picture told me that I don't have leukemia or lymphoma and gave the slide to me as a souvenir. I still have it with me and for some reason, it inspires me to specialize in oncology.